Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 25. This video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our knock control. Now, our knock control is going to allow our engine to be detuned whenever knock is present. Knock is going to be the rapid rise of our cylinder pressure that can damage engine internals. So we want to avoid knock whenever possible. We can use our knock control to guide us in tuning our main spark timing table, as well as long-term engine protection after we've already done the calibration process and we're running it maybe in some extreme conditions where we might have really hot air temperatures or maybe our gas quality isn't the best and we start to run into knock conditions, it can save our engine. I'm going to be walking you through how to work with the knock control, what to look for in the data logging, and how to make sure everything is going to be operating properly. Without further wait, let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our knock control programming within our MAX ECUs. Our knock control is something we absolutely want to integrate into our calibration process and our long-term engine operation so that we can prevent any knock damage to our engine. We can use it as a fail-safe protection feature. This is probably one of the most important things that we can set up and work with with our MAX ECU, and I always use it regardless of any engine that I'm calibrating and tuning with. Now, let's jump in and talk about the basics of spark timing knock control so we can get that out of the way. Then we'll jump in and talk about the nuts and bolts of the knock control and how it works and how to make sure we have everything configured right so we're going to get the results that we're after. There's going to be some logging channels and some screenshots that are going to be showing you what to look for so that when you're calibrating and dealing with the knock control on your particular engine, you're going to set it up properly. First thing I want to do is jump here into our navigation window. Let's go down to the bottom under tuning. And then here we're going to move into ignition angle table. This is our main spark timing table. We've talked about this pretty extensively at this point. You should understand how the base spark timing table works. We know we have our modifier tables in place. Those will all try to compensate and uh, deliver the proper spark timing to our engine regardless of whatever the load's going to be, whatever the engine speed's going to be in the case of air temp or coolant temp compensation, ignition timing trims. Those will try to adjust against our base spark timing so that we have proper spark timing on a cold start or if our air temperature gets too hot and we have more likelihood of knock or pre-ignition occurring. Now, the fact is that we can't always predict exactly what's going to happen even with those compensation trims. So we want to make sure as we're running in, we're commanding the spark timing in our table here, it's not going to have too high of an advanced value or too high of a value here. So if we increase the timing, in our table, depending on the load and the engine speed, doesn't really matter where you're at here, we can find that as we increase the timing, it should allow us to get closer and closer and reach maximum brake torque. At maximum brake torque, that's that point where the peak cylinder pressure will be generated and pushing down on our piston at 15 to 20 degrees after top dead center on our power stroke. That's the ideal point. If we can have our peak cylinder pressure there, that means that we have the greatest mechanical advantage pushing down on our connecting rod and our crankshaft and therefore will produce the best torque output out of our engine. That's what we always strive for. But the problem is going to be depending on what type of engine we're trying to control, what the octane of the fuel is going to be, what the static compression of the engine is going to be. The amount of spark timing we can run to be able to reach that maximum brake torque is going to vary greatly. And we don't know when we're going to be getting too far outside the range of either maximum brake torque where we're going to be finding that we go beyond maximum brake torque, that's going to be something we need a chassis dyno for, or when we get to the point where we're trying to reach maximum brake torque and we just simply have too much timing for that given octane fuel um, and we're going to start to get knock. Now knock is going to be when we have too high of an advanced value within our table for the conditions we're running our engine in and it's going to generate this massive spike in cylinder pressure because our combustion temperature gets very high. We can't control that pressure and have it where we want it to uh, start to push down on the piston, ideally on our, our power stroke. And when we talk about the spike in cylinder pressure, it can be 10 times as great of a cylinder pressure as we'd see with controlled pressure within normal combustion. So if we're generating, let's say, 1,000 PSI, of combustion pressure, we may reach something like eight or 10,000 PSI of combustion pressure. That kind of jump in pressure, depending on the severity of the knock event, can easily damage pistons, rods, uh, sleeves, uh, crankshafts, connecting rod bearings, blow ahead gasket. There's all kinds of things that can damage for our engine, depending again how severe it's going to be. Now, we can integrate a knock sensor, which will allow us to see what is going on with these knock events. We can easily get one fitted to our engine, and we can wire it into our MAX ECU. And we can actually take a look at these events. Now the knock sensor itself is going to have an internal circuit that will absorb 
the pressure waves that are transmitted through our engine block. So under normal operation, there's always going to be noise that's going to be transmitted through the engine. The NOx sensor is going to be seeing that. And it's going to uh, be able to look at that and it'll output some kind of a signal. Now the proportional output of the signal will depend on what type or how, how much of pressure we're seeing. If we're finding that we have normal engine noise and it's constantly going to be generating um, some kind of an output, we can filter that out. But what we're interested in is when we have this huge knock event or we have knock going on, it's going to have these huge pressure spikes which will be transmitted through the cylinder block. And then it'll go through the sensor, it'll send out again in a proportional amount a larger output from the sensor we're interested in those very large spikes because that's when a knock event is occurring. So we can use our knock sensor to determine when we have these large pressure spikes. We can see exactly what's going on and we can see exactly where. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.